So hello everyone, welcome to this uh, demo that will be about prescriptions and how uh, they can help us to heal uh, applications. So uh, in short, we know that uh, latest is not always the greatest and I think that's something that can be seen also in the community uh, where uh, when uh, latest software that is uh, used uh, does not guarantee that uh, it's uh, greatest and issues uh, occur. So, uh, which versions of packages uh, should uh, be picked? Uh, previously, uh, we implemented a stochastic resolver uh, that is based on gradient free reinforcement learning methods. And uh, this stochastic resolver uh, used aggregated knowledge uh, that was placed inside a database. And uh, then uh, a developer introduced a pipeline unit implementation that was written in Python and used this uh, aggregated knowledge uh, inside database. Uh, it can query uh, the database, the pipeline unit can query the database, obtain the knowledge and use that knowledge inside a resolution process. Uh, some of pipeline units uh, did not need any uh, querying to the database as they were pretty static, like if this package in, uh, is seen in the resolution process together uh, with another uh, package uh, in the resolution process, then act on that, possibly remove uh, that package uh, as it can cause uh, troubles or use a different version of, of that package. So uh, we had this uh, implementation and over time uh, we found out that uh, this uh, can be uh, abstracted away. So we still uh, can use the database, we can still use the Python interface uh, to the resolution process. But uh, on top of that, uh, we can uh, abstract away some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, repeating patterns uh, that are seen and these patterns can be stated in the configuration file that can be loaded inside uh, resolver and can be used uh, in the resolution process to uh, deliver uh, greatest uh, software possible. So uh, we introduced prescriptions. Uh, it's a declarative uh, interface to the resolution process as stated. You can see it as dots tabula smaragdina. Uh, you can Google that, uh, what that means and how it relates to TOT. Uh, if you are interested, uh, for example, in alchemy and stuff like that. Uh, but basically it states truth, uh, uh, certainty uh, that in which there is no doubt. Uh, so it's a, a declaration how the resolution process uh, should look like. It's uh, human readable and human maintainable. Uh, these prescriptions are used in advisor or dependency monkey, so any component that uh, is using the resolution process. Uh, we use YAML uh, to describe uh, pipeline units, units in this uh, YAML file and it's basically uh, stating a type of unit that should be plugged into the resolution process and uh, configuration of uh, that pipeline unit uh, in the in the resolution process. So uh, pipeline unit uh, determines uh, semantic, what should be done, and the configuration uh, adjust, additionally adjusts uh, other things like name of package, uh, when the given uh, unit uh, should be included in the resolution process and stuff like that. This opens the possibility to create uh, pipeline units that are uh, specific for recurrent issues or uh, uh, use cases uh, following uh, some, some pattern. So uh, later on we can introduce a pipeline unit that will be specific to ODH uh, for ODH uh, specific uh, base container images and uh, we can configure it inside a YAML file how it should behave uh, and stuff like that. And then based on the YAML uh, file, uh, based on prescriptions, uh, the resolution process uh, can resolve uh, uh, specific uh, packages uh, matching uh, certain criteria. If you take a look at uh, the approach, uh, we have resolver uh, that is resolving software stacks and uh, we simply uh, pass a YAML configuration file to that uh, 
resolver that is uh, server uh, that is resolving stacks uh, server side. So we have server side resolution process, and then uh, if a user comes with some request. Uh, we run this resolver, we inject this YAML configuration file, and the YAML configuration file can state how uh, the uh, software should be resolved so that we deliver high quality uh, software stacks. Uh, if we go deeper, we zoom in on the resolver side, uh, we can see that uh, the resolver is implemented in a way that we have a resolver as a core algorithm. Uh, that is can be based on uh, reinforcement learning methods as uh, already implemented. And then we have a layer uh, on top of that uh, that implements uh, Python classes uh, that understand uh, the YAML, uh, YAML prescription and uh, this uh, uh, YAML prescription is read. Uh, Specific units uh, are instantiated with uh, configuration as stated in the YAML file and uh, can be subsequently used uh, in the resolution process. As you can see, uh, these units can be versioned, and that means uh, that also the prescription file can be versioned. So, uh, as uh, in, for example, Kubernetes, you have job in version one, uh, we can have uh, a pipeline unit called boot uh, in version one in a prescription file and uh, these uh, unit classes understand how uh, these uh, versions should be interpreted so uh, we have these uh, python classes that abstract away uh, how uh, the yaml file is read and uh, interpreted uh, besides having one uh, prescription file, we can supply multiple prescription files to the resolution process. Uh, we are basically not limited how many YAML files you can supply. Uh, the limitation is, I would say, uh, memory consumption when these uh, pipeline units are instantiated. And uh, you can maintain your own prescription file uh, with possibly with your uh, packages uh, if you're a package maintainer and uh, you can supply the configuration to uh, the resolution process how uh, the resolution process uh, should look like. Uh, prescriptions do not collide, they are namespaced and um, uh, you can, you can uh, configure uh, your deployment of thought, uh, how it should act uh, using these uh, YAML files. Um, if we take a look at how uh, prescriptions are managed in a thought deployment, uh, you can find uh, a repository uh, in thought station organization that is called prescriptions. And this repository holds configuration. So uh, listing of uh, pipeline units, uh, in the prescription file, and uh, we will maintain uh, them. Also, if you consume TOTS recommendations, uh, we welcome you uh, to contribute to uh, that configuration file, and by uh, combining efforts, we can uh, bring a database of known uh, issues uh, in open source uh, software, and we can uh, uh, maintain uh, these issues in one place. Uh, once uh, we have this repository with uh, all the prescriptions, uh, then on a top deployment uh, side, uh, they are synced using prescription sync job. Uh, you can find it in prescription sync job repository, and uh, it accepts a file uh, that uh, should be uh, supplied. It syncs uh, it on Ceph. Uh, and uh, subsequently Argo workflows use this prescription file uh, so uh, uh, they are injected into uh, advisor container. This, can, this configuration like which uh, prescription files uh, can go to the resolution process can uh, be configured uh, for each deployment so you can manage your own prescriptions. If we take a look at the workflow, uh, here we have uh, happy de developers because uh, they consume TOTS uh, recommendations. Um, if they spot some issue, 
in uh, libraries they are using or they would like to imp uh, improve the resolution process anyhow. Uh, then they report issues on our uh, prescriptions uh, repository or they directly adjust the YAML configuration file. I would say it's not that uh, hard uh, to adjust it. And uh, then uh, the logic uh, in TOT deployment uh, reads this uh, YAML configuration file uh, based on configuration and uh, syncs it uh, to Ceph. Uh, this is done periodically, uh, and uh, I think the current configuration is that uh, these uh, files are, or this file is synced uh, daily uh, using prescription sync job uh, in each deployment. Once the YAML file is uh, available on Ceph, uh, then Argo workflows uh, can pick it and uh, supply it to the resolver container so uh, developers can continue developing uh, their application and retrieve uh, better, uh, better uh, recommendations by Todd. Here you can see uh, that feedback loop. So we want to have happy developers, so they are collaborative and uh, they report issues and uh, consume uh, recommendations uh, based on uh, based on the configuration file that is uh, uh, maintained. If you are interested, here are three uh, links. Uh, maybe I will show you the prescription repository. So if you go to uh, prescriptions repository. Uh, here you can see uh, just a few files. The most important is uh, prescription YAML. And here you can see configuration of uh, some pipeline units. So, for example, uh, just randomly, uh, we know here uh, that uh, TensorFlow release. Uh, TensorFlow does not uh, support Python 3.9 uh, when, or I can pick another one. It's easier to read. Mm. For example, this one. Uh, here we say uh, that uh, TensorFlow in version 2.1 uh, can cause runtime errors when running with H2.5. H5 by package uh, uh, because they overpinned uh, the TensorFlow maintainers overpinned version range requirements for H5 by. And uh, for this use case, we have a pipeline unit uh, that is of type step and is included in advisor pipeline. So that's the pipeline giving uh, recommendations to users. Uh, as prescriptions can be written also for dependency monkey. Uh, here you can see for which recommendation types we want to register this pipeline unit. So uh, we do this step for performance, security, and stable recommendation types. And uh, if uh, we match TensorFlow in version 2.1 compatible uh, in the resolution process coming from any uh, index, so possibly also from uh, AICOE index, and uh, in the resolution process, there will be H5Py uh, in version above or equal to 3 coming from uh, PyPI org. Then we say that the given step is not acceptable, it's not uh, possible to include H5Py uh, in the uh, results of first stack. Uh, we report this to user. We also add some stack information to users so uh, they are aware of, of uh, this uh, once they do a request on the recommendation engine. Another uh, pipe, uh, there are other pipeline units so of, of different pipe, uh, if different type. Uh, so, for example, here. Uh, uh, for uh, RHEL in version 8.2 or UBI in version 8.2 uh, uh, and uh, running Python 3.6, uh, we uh, print informative message to users that they should consider migrating to UBI uh, or RHEL 8 uh, 
but switch to Python 3.8, it, it can gain up to 30% in performance. Uh, so uh, that's another pipeline you need. Uh, you can browse uh, the, uh, the YAML prescription file and you can also find uh, documentation uh, in our uh, totstation.ninja uh, uh, page and here you can find all the configuration options so for example uh, how to configure uh, library usage so if we detect a specific uh, python uh, libraries used and specific uh, specific uh, uh, symbols from these libraries, then the pipeline units can act uh, somehow and stuff like that. So this basically uh, creates an interface uh, for users to configure uh, uh, the resolver. And here uh, we have uh, a link to prescription sync job. That's the uh, syncing logic that can pick uh, the prescription YAML file and place it uh, on Ceph in a dot deployment. Uh, this jobs, job is parameterized, so if you have your own prescriptions, uh, you can parameterize it uh, so that it syncs also uh, your prescriptions. Um, that would be probably it. Do you have any questions? Yes. Um, um, so if you look at TensorFlow, there's an Intel TensorFlow and there's an upstream TensorFlow and there's um, multiple package names. And I think um, we have had pipeline units which or which have aliases for TensorFlow or implement aliases. Is it still done in pipelines or migrated prescriptions? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, this pipeline unit is called pseudonym that can uh, create alias. So for example, here we have, uh, if you match TensorFlow in any version coming from pypi.org, uh, uh, then uh, you can uh, also yield uh, Intel TensorFlow that is coming from pypi.org as well. And uh, the version uh, should be matched uh, with the one that is found uh, for, for TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Please. so with the prescription file, I have um, all the information how to configure pipelines but uh, the pipeline steps being executed and the sequence of the steps is not done here, right? Uh, uh, pipeline units should be uh, agnostic to uh, uh, how and when they are included in the uh, resolution process. If they are not, uh, you can configure, I think it's called, Dependencies. Dependencies. So uh, you can state uh, which pipeline units should be already included uh, in the resolution process uh, if uh, that pipeline unit uh, is somehow dependent on another unit. Uh, you can do that uh, for core uh, core units. Uh, but if you have multiple prescription files, or you can also uh, link uh, prescriptions uh, from uh, link units from different prescriptions by using uh, their name as as uh, prescriptions are namespaced. Cool, nice, nice demo, nice feature. I like the uh, happy developers on the on the left side. We we shift everybody everything left, um, especially the happiness. I like that. Any other questions, Ufrido? Cool. Thanks uh, for this demo, Frido. You're welcome.